All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, fellow astrophotographers. There's a uh, exciting new comet out. Uh, that's B2022 E3 ZTF. And uh, leave it to the media to highlight some completely mundane feature of an astronomical phenomenon. It's being hailed as the rare green comet. When It's rare because it's it was only here 50,000 years ago. You know, it's a non-periodic comet. Uh, you know, you have different classifications of comets, ones that are show up less in less than 100 years are a periodic comet. Anything over 100 years is a non-periodic comet. And uh, this one apparently was here 50,000 years ago, give or take. Uh, so, yeah, it's a non-periodic comet. So that's what makes it rare. The fact that it's green is incredibly common because of the, the carbon in them. The, uh, the, the coma of a comet is almost always green. <clears throat> Anyways, um, a, lot, a lot of people are taking pictures of it, and there are some very exciting new ways to process comet images, and uh, even more so, I, I made a comet processing video a while ago, and you know, a, couple, a year or two ago, and that wasn't very good. Uh, but the, the ways we can do it now are, are much better, and uh, I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through it quickly because I know there are a hundred other people with the same video out, but uh, I'm I'm hoping just to break it down quickly, uh, without a bunch of you know normal imaging process uh, techniques that I'm sure you guys already know or could find anywhere else. This is, we're just going to deal with what you need to do uh, in in relation to a comment, and uh, just in time the developers in Pixinsight released a, an upgraded version of the common alignment tool and uh on the surface it looks exactly the same uh, basically the, the the user interface is almost exactly the same all the big differences are under the hood and the the most exciting difference as far as i'm concerned is the fact that it can use a psf a point spread function fit to find the center of uh, the comet in images that are that are not star aligned you know normally you would have to star align your your subframes first and then it would just use the timestamp to interpolate the position of the comet and that's how it, it stacked on the comet it was crude uh, but now it can just find the comet if it's anywhere near where you know it should be it, it will use you know so a more advanced technique to locate the comet and stack on, on the center of the comet and why is this a big deal? This is a big deal because now you can use unregistered subframes to uh, to stack your comet master file, and that's that's important because after you, when you when you when you do an alignment when you register your subframes, uh, the computer interpolates you know the pixels. So when when it when it takes one sub and has to move another sub on top of it, you know you're interpolating the pixels, and that's degrading the quality of your data just a little bit. So when you you inter when you do it once for the star alignment and then again for the comet alignment, you know you're really you're you're really uh, degrading the integrity of your data there. You know just for making pretty pictures, it's not a big deal, but for some people it's important. Uh, so the fact that you can use unregistered subs is is a big deal in in just the the, the quality of the, the the image of the comet and the arena you're making me nervous. <laughs> so let's go step by step how you're going to process your comet image. My data is garbage because it has been cloudy for four months straight. Uh, I got like a thirty minute window where I was able to hurry up and go out and uh, get a, a get. I got fifty subs. Most of them have high cirrus clouds and they're, they're terrible but uh you know we, we we do what we can around here in southeast michigan uh but yeah i got i got some data on the comet not great data but it's enough to show you how you can process an image and uh the, the first thing you'll do is just plug everything into you know weighted batch pre-processing just process your image normally weighted batch pre-processing the main difference is you want to keep make a mental note, make a mental note, write a note down, or just use your first sub for your uh, alignment reference. And you have to know 
See, I just do it manually and I just pick my first sub for my for my alignment reference because you have to remember which reference frame you use so that when you then make your comet stack, you're using the same reference so that your comet is in a realistic position in your in your uh, final image. If you don't and you use two different reference frames, you're, it's still going to look, you know, good, but and it's a composite, you know, we're not we're not doing science here. We're just trying to show people and ourselves the, the wonders of the natural world. So is it that big of a deal? To me, it is. You know, it's I, I want I, I'm interested in, you know, presenting reality as accurately as possible. So make sure you pick the same reference frame for your, you know, your your your, your image that you're stacking for your star field and your comet stack so that the comet is in a real position in your final image. So I always just pick the first one. So you go ahead and run that, your weighted batch pre-processing, and that will give you your normal field, your normal star field, and you'll see that your comet gets all stacked and wonky and uh, makes a weird artifact that would give conspiracy theorists and flat earthers fits. But uh, yeah, this is your comet getting rejected and mutilated by the normal uh, integration process. Now, what I do from here is I just take painting. And, and heads up, we will use Star Exterminator, but I will show you that you don't need it. It makes it slightly easier, but you don't need it. But we will use it. So a paid plugin. You can do it with StarNet version 2, but uh, there's just a little, a little more legwork involved there. But anyways, what I, what you do here is take clone stamp and you want to just soften the edges of these artifacts that we've created because if you don't, Star Exterminator will pick up on these and cause weird schmutz in your in your image. So you want to just you know, make sure you're not picking up any stars or mutilating any stars. You just want to go and make sure there are no hard edges in that artifacts, in those stacking artifacts that Blur Exterminator is going to pick up. So, or Star Exterminator, I'm sorry. So, yeah, you clone stamp out that, and now we have a nice star field. And then you just go and use Star, or star Exterminator and pull all your stars out and give yourself your star image. And that's basically all you need that, that original stack for. Now you boot up your Comet. Comet alignment tool, load up. Okay, you can, yeah, you can do this first. Okay, load up um, all of your, if you've got a, a one-shot color, load up your debayered files not register these are the calibrated debayered files load those up into comet alignment if you're using a monochrome camera just load up your calibrated images into the comet alignment tool and double click on your first sub stretch it click on the center of your comet it should find it easily Double click on your last sub. Click on the center of your comet. It should find it easily. And then comet alignment should be able to go from there and find out the centers, the, the center of your comet on all of your subs. Now, if you just click on a random one and you look at it, it won't be interpolated exactly because, I, well, I've dithered. Uh, but even if your system is totally perfect and you're not dithering, you probably still won't have it exactly right. You can see that it didn't locate the center of the comet here, but this is just on the interface. When it goes and does the alignment, it will hunt that down and find it. Because you can see that even if you click, I clicked right here, I clicked right here and it still found the center of the comet way over there. So even if it's not perfectly close, it will probably still find it. Um, after it runs the comet, okay, then from there you pick your output directory where you want your comet aligned files to go, and 
just hit or make sure that compute PSF fits is clicked or else it will have trouble find uh, it's not gonna find your comment for you then just hit your uh, your run there and it'll run it now um, from there you can load up after it stacks on your comet you can load up star exterminator run it in batch mode select your output directory uh, select your input files and execute run it and that will give you uh, your nice starless comet background images and uh load those up into blank and run it and you can see that it did a great job you can see that that comet is right where it's supposed to be there's one stinker in there okay one of them i just saw it one of them it was a little bit far away let's see okay this one missed that one now you can go back you can open your comet alignment. You can look. We are on 5.13.10. You can open your comet alignment back up. 5.13.10. Double click on it. And you can see there's a star right here. There's a star right here. It, maybe it got confused. Let's, okay, it found it. But another benefit to the new comet alignment is that you can locate individual comets for it. And then you can either rerun it, or if you've got plenty of subs, just throw it out. Or, I think, I don't know if there's a way to manually register one. You might be able to just like clear it all out, and then just use your first and your last, and then manually register one of them on it. I don't know. But, I mean, you can just go back and grab that one that got screwed up. Get them all um, registered on the comet. And then you stack your uh, your master comet image. And uh, I, I get the best results. Load up all of, your, all of your comet stacked images in image integration. Then I get, I get the best results with a regular sigma clipping scale zero offset uh, and then I make I increase the aggressiveness of low and high to, to three and two and then I also do large-scale pixel rejection and then run that and that will give you a, a, a no star integration image of your comet i mean you can see my dad is terrible so um but but that looks pretty good you know that you i could you can see the ion tail here and there's a little bit of junk here from some of the brighter stars but you can just go and clone stamp that out and then this is where you would you know work on you know just the regular image processing to get rid of uh get rid of your gradients here get rid of light pollution you know do your curves and saturation to bring up uh the image of the comet oh we're at 15 minutes already i wanted to go fast uh but yeah you can then just go and work on this background get the get the image the way you want it and then from here now you have to make sure when you add your go to add your stars back the star field that we got from our original weighted batch pre-processing uh you know both of these are still linear so if you stretch your comet image you have to apply that same stretch to the stars or they're going to look weird when you add them back so you have to make sure you're you know on an even playing field here when you go to add your stars back but you work on your common image and you can go and clone i think i said clone stamp these out a little bit and, uh, and then you just go open up pixel math stars plus comet true love forever create a new image run it and there you have your, your frozen stacked comet in an image in a nice star field. 
And that's all there is to it. And you can see that if you look at them, we'll zoom in here and then we will put the same view on this one. So because we used the first frame as our reference, you can see the comet is exactly where it was on the first frame. Uh, so yeah, that's, you know, that's basically all there is to it. Now, I did go, I used the same Sigma clipping stack, the same Sigma clipping settings and integrated the, the comet stacked images with the stars still in them. And we still got a pretty good background. It clipped those stars right out. Uh, the main difference being like you can see, you know, there's it's just there's just a little bit more junk and stuff like this. You can see the background's a lot cleaner here, where when we use Star Exterminator, and there's still you know there's more junk when we had to stack out the stars, but that's still serviceable. Okay, you don't need to remove the stars if you have, uh, you know, this was 50 subs. If you have you know a few hours of data. You can get pretty aggressive with your with your sigma clipping, and it's going to remove the stars and give you something workable too. And then you know you could just clone stamp that out, and you we still see the ion tail. You know the comet looks basically ex uh, maybe even better. You know the nucleus looks tighter here. I don't know what the difference is, but. You know, you basically the same effect. I don't, I don't know if Star Exterminator changed the comet a little bit. It may have, but it looks a lot tighter in the one where we didn't use Star Exterminator on it. Who knows? It, anyways, you're st it's going to impress your friends <laughs> either way. Uh yeah, I have plenty more testing to do myself, but that's all you need to know to. To, to to process a comet image. Um so good luck out there everybody clear skies. Let me try this real quick. Hold on. So that's the one that I stacked with the star field with the stars still on the comet image. And yeah, I think the comet looks better on the one that we did not use Star Exterminator on. Is Star Exterminator messing with your comets? Tune in next time and find out. Good skies, everybody. Go go take an image of that comet. With the... She pulled out her phone to take a picture of me and I was like making me nervous. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I even drank. I took a. I was weird taking a drink of my beer because I'm just nervous now. <laughs> okay, I'll cut all this out. <laughs>